All right then, so there's one thing we've not really done at the minute and that is updating data. Now, there's no real room inside this application for me to update the data, so I don't really want to start extending this application. Instead, I'm gonna show you all of this stuff inside the console over here by creating the methods. So first of all, we have access to things like DB inside here because that JavaScript is already run and we have that constant available to us inside here. So we can do things like db.collection and then in brackets, cafes to grab the cafes collection. And by the way, that needs a D in front of it. Okay, and then we can do something. So say for example, I want to update a document. If I want to change the name of a cafe, for example, well, what I need to do is grab a reference to that individual document first of all. Right now, we're just referencing the whole cafe's collection. Now, before, when we deleted something, we grabbed a reference to that individual document by saying dot doc, and then we pass through the ID of that document right here. So we can do the same thing here. We're gonna do dot doc to grab a single document, and we're gonna pass through an ID. So let's pass through something like this one so we'll just inspect this and we can see the id is this thing right here so i'm going to copy that and i'm just going to paste it inside quotations like that because this is a string like so okay so now we have this reference right here and we can update it if we want to now the way we update it is by using a method called dot update like so and then we pass through an object into this method so inside this object, this object refers to the actual document. So I could say, well, the name property now is going to be called Wario World. Okay. So if I run this function, then we can see at the minute it's pending. But if we refresh over here now, we should see that this will update to Wario World. So let's refresh and we can see that update has been completed now. So that's cool, that's how we update something. And I could do the same thing with a different document and update the city if I wanted to. So let's grab this thing over here, which is Sean's Coffee Emporium. And I'm gonna paste it inside here because we're grabbing that document now. And this time we wanna update the city and I'll change this to New York. All right, so again, let's hit enter. Again, we get pending, but it will complete after some time. If we refresh now, we should see that New York is now the city of this one. So that's how we update our documents. We first of all, grab a reference to the collection, then the individual document, and then just use the update method like so. Now there's one other method I wanna show you, and that is set. Now this is a bit like update, but what set does is completely override your document with the new properties. So say for example, I did this, and instead of using update, I did dot set, and then change this to Liverpool, like so. What will happen now is it will update the city of this right here, Sean's Coffee Emporium, to Liverpool. However, it's gonna completely override the whole document. So it's gonna override the name property as well, even though we've not passed the name property in here. And because we've not passed the name property in here, then it's gonna have no value. So if I press enter now and then refresh, you'll notice that where it says Liverpool, we don't actually have a name anymore because the dot set method has overridden completely that document. If I was to use dot set and set a name again to Sean's, I'll just call it Sean's Cafe for speed. And let's just for simplicity, not add that in there, press enter, and then refresh. Now we can see it's updated again. Awesome. So that's the difference between update and set. Update allows you to just update one or two of the properties without affecting the rest of the document, whereas set will overwrite completely the whole document regardless of which properties you want to update.